right, uh, and now, finally, we have finished, uh, we finished the Nintendo Direct, we finished the Elden Ring trailer, uh, I showed off, you know, where were, where my character is at in Elden Ring in, in terms of, like, stats, uh, foreshadow of the Erd Tree, um... And I think, so I think, and I think we'll have, I think we'll have an okay time with Shadow of the Earth Tree. I, I'm a little hesitant to say that, because, like, because, like, we're, we're able to handle mid-game enemies, no problem, but Shadow of the Earth Tree definitely seems like it's geared to be... A, like, just based on the, tra oh, the trailer, it looks like it's supposed to be like, oh, you beat the, um, if you can beat, you beat Moog to access Shadow of the Erd Tree, like, real Moog, the Lord of Blood Moog, the Shard Bear Moog, and then after beating Moog, and that, you know, Will actually allow you to go into Shadow of the Earth, will let, into to access the DLC. However, if you if you do, um, oh, I forgot to change the category. Uh, however, if you do, um, or how? But okay, so. Let me, let me try this again. So you beat the Shard Bear mode, Lord of Blood, to access the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC, which is basically, which is either a spot, which is either between the, the Mogwin Palace, like, level... Recommendation, which I think is like, I don't know, 120 or something, or 140 or something like that. And so it's either between Mogwin Palace and Halo Tree level scaling, or it's on, or it's identical to Halo Tree scaling. The DLC, uh, I saw a post on Twitter that said that that there's supposed to be a boss fight that's as hard as Millennia, which makes me think it's more supposed to be, like, second Halig Tree, um, in terms of, like, difficulty and scaling, which wouldn't be too bad, because I believe the recommended level for, for, for entering Halig Tree in just basic new game, like, new game plus zero in Elden Ring is 180. Fighting Millennia, I think, is, like, 210, maybe? Um. But, um, when we do it, we're gonna be in new game plus one, so we've leveled up a pretty cons- I've leveled up a pretty considerable amount in that. Um, why did this not switch my category? The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. This, I hit done and it switched me back to special events. That's weird. <laughs> anyway, let's get started with the game. Uh, uh, Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. It's still loading, geez. There we go. Alright, we're gonna continue with Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, or Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. We're at part two of the trial. 
This should, this is hopefully the last, the end of the trial. We may go into, we'll definitely go into part of, of the, we'll, we'll probably go into part of, uh, episode three today as well. Well, tonight, I should say. Uh, that's for stream. For YouTube, this will, uh, you know, obviously this will end whenever the net to be continued screen occurs. 23rd, February 9, 23 a.m., the Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. This is it then, Mr. Naruhodo. Yes, it's time to put an end to this now. To the miserable curse that's been plaguing Mr. Natsume. To everything. And in my own small way, I shall do everything I can to help you. Sasaki so is my sidelined. Ah! Good, good morning to you too, Mr. Natsume. Good morning! Good morning! Welcome to Mr. Naruhodo Esquire! Wasn't you to Chenway as hap happily as the, the main player of the day's trial is a tear? Why would you do that? Why? Oh dear, we didn't mean to cause offense, Mr. Natsume. I thought perhaps, but because you had your eyes shut so tightly, you were meditating, finding dinner calm. It seemed wrong to disturb you. I was waiting! What's the matter, Mr. Natsume? You seem different somehow today. Why, naturally, that's because I've attained spiritual enlightenment. The path of literature, you see, is a dis journey to discover one's own death. Or such like. That's the sort of morning conversation I was hoping for. That's why I had my eyes shut. I missed the signs, I'm afraid, somehow. You have to forgive me. And you mustn't talk of your path leading to you to death, Mr. Natsume. That was just an example! Oh yes, there it is. Inner call. You, you barely came to see me at all yesterday. I, I was sure you'd abandoned me. And return to our beautiful long lost homeland. We've not even been in Great Britain a week yet. Yes, yes, well, anyway. I intend to set everything straight in court today. I'm determined to uncover the truth. Okay, so. We saw that, um, this is irrelevant to this link's. Olive to Shamspear. Because she had the envelope that had the letter telling her to meet up with some with him, uh, well, with someone about Duncan Ross's death. actually reached an important decision myself. Oh? What sort of decision? I shall fill you in after the trial. Alright. Let's drop a quick little save right here. Oh. <laughs> it saved so quickly. It would seem... Mr. Sholmes isn't coming today after all. It's a very clear message, I think. My dear fellows, you must win this battle of your own merits. It's a very clear message, I think. He's overslept again. The great detective, my arch nemesis. Well, may he stay away, if you ask me. Defendant and your legal representative, 
The trial's about to begin. Make your way into the courtroom immediately. Today, once again, we face the Reaper. Even though the Reaper stands for the prosecution, the defendant's fate is sealed. But I don't believe that in that legend any more than I believe in Soseki-san's curse. The truth is hidden here somewhere, and I won't let it escape me. I had to keep believing in my client and keep fighting to the very end. That's all. And we know that, that we canonically win this trial because... The game, because, uh, this is a flashback. <laughs> 23rd February, 9.40 a.m., the Old Bailey Courtroom. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court in session. Also, interestingly enough, this lady got added to our profiles. I call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. Yes, the defense is ready. Very good. And I now call upon the six ladies and gentlemen of the jury, chosen by the lot to represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready to proceed? Absolutely. Justice will be done. You mark my words. I feel obliged to say, I especially feel with us on days when my hat is sitting just right. Oh, well I wonder if you could adjust my hat for me. And please, be as ruthless as you like. Thieves deserve no to die if you ask me. Especially gas thieves. I have no sympathy for the man at all. You realize he's not the one on trial. Uh, the, 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 the gas thief isn't the one on trial here. Juror number four. Look, I said it yesterday and I'll see it again now. I don't have time for this. I got my own problems. Oh, may the Lord tell us all who lay down here and to lead his walk to righteous verdict again today. Lord Van Zeeks, what can you tell us? The prosecution's report, please, for the court. In relation to the theory expounded by the defense yesterday regarding the defendant's tea. <gasps> so he does have the results. Before the prosecution delivers the black news about the black tea belonging to the black god in the dark. Allow me a moment to save a little bit of a more sanguine view. In fact, I'll defer to the good detective for the report. Here's to you, Inspector. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. As indicated by the defense, we found a bar of soap just outside the victim's window in the snow. And there was indeed fro a frozen reddish liquid in a little depression on the top of it. Yes, that's the tea. That's what Mr. Natsume brought with him that night. Well, the brains at the yard analyzed it, and yes, you're right, it was tea. And there wasn't a trace of strychnine or any other toxic substance in it. <gasps> no poison at all! In other words, the tea that the defendant brought with him to the victim's room is innocent. It's in the clear. What a revelation! As I suspected. This makes it quite clear. The defendant, Mr. Soseki Natsume, is blamed here. My learned friend is jumping to conclusions again. A typical Japanese reaction. What? Yes, it's true. No poison was found in the few drops of liquid recovered from the soap on the window ledge. Or is he gonna say that he poisoned the tea after the guy poured the the, the liquid into the soap? <laughs> but what logic is that? Would you take a drop from the tea to conclude the water and 
but the water in the ocean isn't salty. My word, the water in the ocean is extremely salty, Council. Exactly. Unfit for drinking, just as the victim's tea was in the night in question, as the court has already heard. Bitter was the precise word from the lips of Mr. William Shanspear. Whom the prosecution now calls back to the stand. Very well, I will uphold the prosecution's request. Mr. Shanspear. Yes, it sounds like we're going to have another confrontation with our theatrical friend. Bailiff, show Mr. Shamspear to the stand. Mr. William Shamspear, the victim of this despicable crime. Oh heaven, oh hell, do you command me to remember? Forsooth, twas I, Shamspear, did have a belly full of the foul food given in mine innocence. Yes, but as was revealed in yesterday's proceedings, the witness is not as innocent as we had per perhaps first been led to believe. By using pots of soup such as this, he has been stealing gas from the supply company, yes. One may smile and smile and be a villain. Forsooth, twas I, Shanspear, did have a room full of the sweet fuel given. That's right, old jokes, don't forget, this man is a rotten thief! I haven't forgotten. I kept all that about the ice cool a tiny secret, didn't you? Should have owned up soon. Arrest him, I say! Arrest him at once and let him feel the sting in my tail! You have a tail? Oh, indeed, by dint of vile and cowardly means, I have been plotted to further my own ends, I confess. Thou wouldst not pardon my sins, of that I am sure. If you acknowledge your wrongdoing, what exactly are you doing here? Cowards die many times before their deaths, and for a coward such as I, death be well deserved. But would it be would it that a still greater crime passeth unpunished? For lo, the hairy-faced gentleman of Father East than Verona did contrive to poison me. Objection! But there was no poison that he found in your room. The police have attested to that. What the defense would assert as an inconsistency will quickly be cleaned up by the witness's testimony. Is that not so, Mr. Shamspear? I would most gladly speak. Very well, let the witness, t witness testify to explain this inconsistency. Tell the court why it is that the a poison apparently entered your body, though none was found in the tea. inconsistency. The Japanese man did come to my chamber with tea brewed in a pot. Twas in my cup alone that the wicked uh, miscreant secretly poured his wicked poison. Whilst feigning and near distraction in our debate, ne'er did a drop of his own drink pass his lips. When he departed by and by, I did use the tea that remained in his cup to make my coins of ice. Thus, tis no surprise that the poison be not found in the tea I did pour into the molds of soap. So you're saying he poisoned your tea? But not his? I'm not supposed to disprove that. The 
medicine was slipped into the cup after the tea had been poured. A normal way for poison to be administered, in my experience. Wait, otherwise it would be disastrous if the poisoner were to mix up the cups, for instance. But no poison bottle was found at the scene. Because, quite simply, the Nipponese took the bottle back to his own room. <laughs> the absence of a vessel containing the poison only becomes problematic when considering suicide. Ugh. I knew that. But now it should be perfectly clear. A bar to of cheap soap. It's wholly insufficient to wash the deep stains of guilt from the accused's hands. Madams, tis true that I shams may be a common thief of gas. But, but, and listen here, ladies and gentlemen. Wherefore would I lie? Verily, I have no cause. I have not to lose. Well. I do declare. I do declare. Thank you for your testimony, witness. Counsel, proceed with the cross-examination. Yes, my lord. We're gonna have to do another summation examination. Hold it! I understand that you were already acquainted with Mr. Asume, is that correct? I know thee not, old man. Fall to thy prayers. Do I know thee? Do I know thee or know thee not? Methinks tis all I can know that thy destiny mingles with mine. You lost me at the first the Zounds, sir. Thou must learn the English tongue before thou turns thy hand to lawyering. I did, but I must have missed the archaic Elizabethan lecture. Verily and in truth, twas a fine flavored brew. Though a drop of poison did barb its sweetness, as the thorn doth barb the sweet rose. That, dear friends, be the simple truth. Listen to Mr. Shields speaker. He seems even better, in even better form than yesterday. Either that, or I'm in worse form. What que no los dos? Um. That fated evening after where I did dine at Grubb's Grubbery, a local alehouse of good report. Not did pass my lips but the tainted black tea. But behold, the poison was not in the tea at first. Hold it! Are you saying that you saw the moment when the poison was added to your tea? To have witnessed the act and then drank the tea? Thou dost describe the actions of a fool. Quite so, quite so. But not one likes going thirsty, do they? Sooner I would die than be quenched than parched. Would I have the choice? Actually, on the night in question, the water main was frozen, I believe, wasn't it? Not for the tea and smooth, I would have sooner died frozen and then quenched or parched. Right. No ice squirms means no heating. The witness has had had more than one brush with the death of the night in question at the sea. Hmm. Remind the court, Mr. Shansmere, as to whether or not the accused drank any of the tea he brought with him. With the greatest of pleasure, my liege. Feigning distraction in our debate. Um. Never did a. Never did a drop of his own drink past his lips. So he did not. So this is saying he did not drink the tea.
Uh, let's just pass for now. But the teacup Mr. Hatsume he drank from was completely empty at the scene. Let's not forget the defendant's mats drink tea while it's hot. I did go from the poison cup that night, and in mine agony did I writhe uncontrolled. In fits of pain, I did knock the fellow's cup, and its contents spilt as blood from a gaping wound, methinks. There's no... But we have... We have the cup here, and it's not broken. Though certainly, it was after I had made the coins of ice from his tea. Perhaps that cup was found on the table that the victim was slumped over. There is no contradiction here. It's true, there was no tea left in either cup that we found at the scene. But still, something about the statement is troubling me. Yes, of course, I know what it is. So it's not so much wise drink the tea while it's hot matsum, isn't it? No, I'm not sure that's it. Thank you, witness. Now reiterate from the court what it is that occupied you after your guest had left before you and before you drank your tea. the tea that remained in his cup to make coins of ice. Hold it! Yes, yeah, so that you can cheat the gas company of that. Isn't that right? So I think what we're supposed to do, I think we're supposed to present the cups right there. Because there's no tea rings, which means that the tea, which means that there was no tea left in his cup at the time that he departed. To cheat or to die, tis life's only choice. Yes, faith to cheat, it should be the wise choice, and mine occupation be not an ugly one. Prithee, dost thou not see beauty in the simplicity of the ruse? No, I don't, and don't be very sure, sir. and be very sure, sir. Once this trial is over, Alta Gas will take you to task over this legal task. I shall not run, I shall not hide, sooth to say. I have nowhere to run, nor to hide. But my lady, what's thou... What wouldst thou with this pitiful player? Oh, I'll tell you what I'd like to do with you, starting with the shoddy shirt on your back! Tis time for a sham spear dance! What a harsh world we live in! The thieving of the castle was addressed in yesterday's proceedings. The prosecution calls on the defense not to muddy the waters with irrelevancy. Consider that a warning, counsel. Yes, my lord. Why am I the one in trouble here? Mr. Shamspear, after the accused returned to his own lodgings, you used his teeth to make your coins. Is that correct? To cheat or to die, I did make my choice many moons ago. So surprised. The poison uh, be not found in the tea I did pour into the molds of soap. Hold it! If first having made your special coins, it was at your two in the morning when you collapsed, that would mean you can't have drunk any tea yourself until around that time. Once ensnared by literary debate, will not else be found in the furrows of the mind. The debate about Romeo and Juliet, you mean. And who was the stronger of the two? Rightly did I pay no heed to the tea as I rustled with the, the abominable fellow. I don't 
don't remember the dates of that when I was in study. When I was studying. Are you suggesting that neither of you actually drank the tea whilst it was hot then? My lord, wouldst thou be privy to some Shakespearean wisdom? Husband, wife, and tea. Ought I be the tepid bee? Ah, uh, yes, so very true. Everyone has different preferences when it comes to tea. I think you might have interpreted that wrongly. Hmm, so it's been proven that there was no poison in Sasaki son's tea. That should be hugely in our favor, but the atmosphere in this courtroom today. It feels as though everybody is against us, Mr. Naruto. Must be the Reaper's poison. I'm afraid that if we don't find a significant flaw in this testimony somewhere, the jury will pronounce Mr. Natsume guilty. Oh, it feels like we jumped into the fire here. Alright. Um. So. I'm gonna save here. I'm not entirely sure where to. Bring. So he says he used the tea that remained in Natsume's cup to make coins of ice, but there's no tea ring in Natsume's cup. Which would be the. Which there would be if there was any tea left. So I'm going to try presenting here. Objection! You claim that Mr. Natsume didn't drink a drop of tea on the night in question. We got it right because the, um... because the music stopped. <laughs> and they used the tea that was left in this cup to make your fake coins. But that's not possible. How, how, how? Chop logic. What is this, ye dark eclad fiend? The two teacups from the scene, the one used by the victim and the other one by the defendant, have clear difference have a clear difference between them. One that represents incontrovertible proof. Incontrovertible? What difference? What difference? Look at the inside of the cups. Just here, there's a clearly visible ring. Yes, a tea ring. Commonplace enough. Indeed, such things occur all too readily when only one leaves tea in the cup for a while. And yet, Mr. Natsume's cup has no such ring. Good lord, you're right. It's completely clean. Well, not really, considering it probably hasn't been washed since then, but still. And pretty so, what what's what makes thou of it? That's as what Mr. Natsume told the court yesterday. The Japanese saying he quoted Drink tea while it while it's hot. While it's hot. That's right. Yes. The Jiffy Mr. Natsume was true to his usual self that night and drank his tea in no time. Uh if, as you claim in your testimony, he didn't touch a drop of his tea. A ring would have been developed on the inside of his cup as well, after the several hours the tea was left standing. But, um... In short, Mr. Shamspear, you clearly lied to the court. True to your... Get me to another ring! Objection! In my hollow chalice to seven times during any one trial. You might want to keep that information to yourself. Yet on occasion, teaching distracts me and I pour more times than I intend until the bottle is dry. Your drinking habits are fascinating, but irrelevant. On the contrary, they illustrate the fickleness of human memory. To William Shamspear. Yes, my leech. Though you previously stated you made the coins of ice of, of, uh, from the leftover tea in the accused's cup. Could it be that you were perhaps mistaken? 
We found him holding his own cup! We don't have a way of proving that, do we? He's gonna be like, oh, do you have proof of this? We need Soames' spray. Hey! Could it be that it is? Perhaps there was some tea remaining in the small teapot that did the scene. A fact that had vanished from your memory until now. Faith, my liege, thou art a magician. Are you fucking kidding me? This guy will not let it go. <laughs> well, verily, tis thou, though thou hast seen with thine own eyes that night. Ew, there was tea left over in the pot, and he used that. Would have melted the fucking soap, though. Right? Because it's on this stove. What? Forsooth, I was mistook. I did plan to use the tea from, tea from the Japanese fellow's cup, but no, when I looked, twas empty. And thus did I use the drinks that festered in the teapot as my liege did suggest. Objection! And you just suddenly remembered now that you made a mistake before? Are we supposed to believe that? Objection! People's memories are perfect, my learned friend. Which is why we rely on evidence instead. But in any case, it makes no difference. The victim's most recent testimony tells us two things of note. Firstly, that the poison was put into the victim's teacup only. And secondly, that the spoiled cup was not the source of the insipid ice creams that have bewitched this court. Hmm. The prosecution needs a fine summary of the facts. Furthermore, that testimony remains valid and in full support of the established facts. In other words... The inconsistency claimed by the defense simply does not exist. No! What does this mean, then? I do declare it means there's no issue with the gas thief's testimony. Apart from the threat about the thief's gas, obviously. My lords, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I do solemnly swear, after I did dine at Grub's Grubbery Alehouse that night, not did pass my lips, but the black tea given me by the Japanese, who his back be stooped as low as death. <sighs> John, what did you die in, sir? Why, I did partake of my favorites. A broth as would to be called soup, and a leaf as would to be called salad. And since a new recent meaning was established, and the word was served. But you gods will give us some faults to make us men. Yeah, I like soup. <laughs> Willingly would I suffer what punishment to seem fit to serve a wicked thief of gas. But I pray he wise and noble fellows ne'er forget the simple truth. That be one thing and this be another. <gasps> Terrors all, your humble servant, Sham Spirit, doth entreat you. Punish the Japanese fellow for his sins. My lord! My lord! If I may speak, my lord. Yes, Mr. Foreman? I believe we may have been duped by that rotten defense lawyer. God. <laughs> Summation examination to let's... 
Get this over with. By me? I do declare, you may be right. We all know the way from there was making to coins of ice to keep himself warm. This boy reminds us of uh, he's stealing gas, he deserves a dose of poison, man. Eh? He's been leading us up to the garden path, that's what he's been doing. I really never said anything like that. But what? But what we just heard from the victim uh, has opened our eyes again. We reached the decision this time and we won't be swayed from it. So the court, acknowledge, the court acknowledges the position of the jury foreman. And we'll duly hear the jury's findings. What? No! You, you can't yet. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your decisions now. Guilty! 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 Guilty. I hereby declare the jury to be in one accord. Oh, happy day! How is this happening? My lord, the defense asserts its right to carry out a summation examination. Very well, the court upholds the defense's right. Timid, my learned friend is unable to accept the obvious truth. The trial will therefore enter its second summation examination immediately. Jurors, the court calls upon each of you. Set the grounds upon which you find the defendant guilty of the crime of which he is charged. Judicial findings. The jurors' contentions. I'm a man of logic. We ain't having considered all evidence, the defendant must logically be guilty. I do agree that the, ga the gas is far too expensive. I can quite understand why the man would want to avoid paying. This stuff explodes and it can poison you. It's absolutely lethal, gas is. Gas doesn't come for free. It costs a fortune to deliver it around the city and maintain the pipes. Should be told the team my wife serves up for me is just a little sketchy. It's a little sketchy at times. I know the girl's best if it's a upset, right? There's no other explanation, is there? Ugh. <sighs> I do feel that perhaps personal opinion about gas and supplies influence decisions somewhat. But never mind. <laughs> I was about to say, these guys are all just complaining about the price of gas. Also, this is like the 19... Early uh, 19th... I uh, no, early 20th century, so like 1900s. So, I'm pretty sure. No, no, you really should mind. The truth is, our counter-argument wasn't as unassailable as we'd hoped. If Mr. Shamster was poisoned, there can be no doubt of that. And how are we supposed to turn this around? I think we need to establish the method by which Shamster was actually poisoned. Our only hope is to demonstrate to the court, uh, that to the court incontrovertibly. Wait, was he po was he poisoned by the gas? He must have been poisoned by the gas. But that's surely almost impossible at this stage. If we don't manage to find it, though, Mr. Minatsume will... we be found guilty. No delays, counsel. Proceed with the summation examination. Jury examination. The defense's rebuttal. Alright, um... Hold it! All the evidence. All the evidence, you say? 
That's right, and there's no room for doubt. It's all pointing with that Japanese man with the big mustache. Aha! I can pursue! It says an Englishman with the bigger mustache. Which means we need to show them and some new evidence to make him change his mind. I don't really have that kind of evidence. Don't worry, the summation examination has barely started already. Perhaps I'll be a shift from the situation that shows an existing piece of evidence in a new light. Let's hope so. Start with them. I need to find some way out of this deadlock. Hold it! Can we please talk about the poison rather than the gas, do you think, sir? Well, if you like, I mean, to be honest, I take poison over gas every time. You take poison? What I mean is, poison can only poison you. Does, doesn't it explode, doesn't Goodness me, what are you talking about? Set him straight, please, lawyer man. Well, it's certainly true that poison isn't prone to exploding. But I think you'll find poison also can't light or heat up a room. Ugh! You're right! I hadn't considered that at all! Young lawyer man! Um, yes? You have a good head on your shoulders. But you knew someone like you as our company's legal representative! I wasn't expecting to pick up more business in the middle of a trial, that's for sure. Anyway, the point is, I haven't had the best experience with gas companies in the past. Time of the place to be discussing the price of gas, madam. But really, think of the injustice. Air is, air is a gas. Us, and air is freeze. Why should ultimate gas cost money? It, it makes my blood boil. I can feel myself becoming more ruthless than ever. This isn't the time or place to be ruthless either. I might interject here. Ah, yes, madam. It seems my fellow charge takes issue with the price of company charges for gas. But it's precisely because of things like this man that the cost goes up! Oh, what a beastly man! That unkempt mustache, those hunched shoulders, poisoning tea, and stealing gas? Utterly unforgivable! No, not him. He's not the gas thief. No, 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 Mr. Natsumi isn't the one who's been stealing gas. I'll thank you not to go on adding more crimes. Mr. Natsumi hasn't been poisoning tea either! Well, anyway, I'm quite mad my mood is made up as the price of gas. Hold it! <laughs> Can we please refrain from all this talk of gas? There's an all out attack underway here, in case you hadn't noticed, against my company's gas. And I'm supposed to sit here and take it, am I? I don't think so. It's just really buzzing now. Oh, I've heard about our wonderful fuelless explosions and poisonings. What about electricity, hmm? What about getting electrocuted? What about that? A little explosion here and there is nothing in comparison. Any explosion could hardly be described as nothing, madam. Nevertheless, the theft of your gas is deplorable. My point exactly, but the gas thieves aren't even the worst of our enemies. We have a far more defi- we have far more devious reprobates to contend with on a daily basis, you know. More devious? Who, madam? Other gas companies, of course. Other gas companies? Not quite what I was expecting. We generate gas and deliver it to our customers fair and square. Indeed. Nobody is questioning that, madam. Altamont is an exemplary gas company. But there are other unscrupulous gas companies here in London that don't even have any gas at all! What? But they don't have any gas, how do they go about selling it to people? You wouldn't think it possible, would you? But they steal our gas, you see, and sell that! They steal your gas? How on earth is such a thing possible? Gas companies like ours deliver gas to people's homes via a network of pipes. But these devious reprobates secretly disconnect our pipes and divert ga our gas into their own rotten pipes. They make a contract. Then they make a contract with households. 
the household supplied by those pipes. And we take money for the precious gas and take money for the precious gas that's rightfully ours without us even knowing. The diverting gas into our own pipes illegally. What a brazen form of theft! When we visit our cu customers' houses to collect money from their meters, we always have to check whether or not one of these devious companies has yeah. been up to its tricks. Excuse me! Do you have something to say about that, juror number three? Oh, golly! You mean me? I I'm terribly sorry. I was just thinking to myself. I really did catch him off guard there. Thinking about what the lady next to you was saying, correct? Well, yes. I just got a little riled up about it recently, you see. Go on. An Altamont gas worker visited my house the other day to investigate the pipe work. We need to ask for your cooperation when we carry out this, a secret check of your property, sir, the fellow said. So I let him in, and do you know what he did? I'm, um, afraid I have no idea. Please tell us. He was able to take one of my lights off the wall. Then he grabbed the exposed mouth of the pipe and started blowing into it. What do you think you're doing, young man? You're giving away company secrets there! Oh please, everybody knows! It was very nearly the death of me, I can tell you! What do you mean? I'll explain if you don't mind. As I said before, these unscrupulous ga other gas companies connect the cu customer's pipes to our pipe network. Yes, but how does blowing into the pipes come into it? Obviously, there's gas in the pipes, and it's at a fairly low pressure. By blowing air through the pipe, you can make the pressure drop temporarily. And if you do that, any lights connected to the same pipe will flicker, will flicker for a moment. Ah, I see. In other words, if upon blowing into the pipe, the lights of an adjacent property that had no contract with their company flicker, then you can know that these devious scoundrels have been meddling with the pipes. Exactly, my lord. That's it in a nutshell. Oh my gosh. So that means... So if this guy was checking the pipe work in a in adjacent building and Garadab Oh no, because they're on Altamont gas, right? Yeah, they're on Altamont. Hmm. It's the reason why we have teams of workers going around neighborhoods to investigate which lights flicker. The trouble is, the particular worker who came to my house didn't know the strength of his own breath. He blew down the pipe with all his might, and you, uh, you can guess what happened, can't you? Well, if he blew hard, then... Wait, you mean... That's right, the lights didn't just flicker, they went out. Along with the stove, gas started pouring into the house. What a disaster. The gas supply must have been interrupted briefly because the man blew too hard so the flames went out. I'm afraid I yelled at the fellow. Are you trying to kill us all? I said. So by disconnecting a lamp and blowing into the exposed gas pipe, it's possible to extinguish lamps and stoves connected to the same network of pipes. Then when gas starts flowing again, it just silently seeps, in seeps into the room. Mr. Naruhoto, I think perhaps... Yes, this is almost certainly the clue that we've been hoping for. Juror number three, the defense requests that you amend your statement to include that information. Well, well, if you'd like, I don't mind. Well, I do! That's our company's secret method of identifying Rose trying to diddle us. Like I said, madam, it's widely known already. Very well, juror number three, you will amend your statement accordingly. Yes, my lord, although I'm not really sure what the point of all this is. Turn on a gas right and extinguish everything in the house and then you're in real trouble. <sighs> Hold it! When you say extinguish everything in the house, 
Do you mean even on different floors? Oh yes, all floors are connected to the same pipe after all. That's true of every building. But it's gas supply contract rents are issued for whole properties. Well, I had no idea that it was possible to extinguish gas appliances simply by blowing down the pipe. Is that something we all like to publicize, to be honest? We have to carry out these investigations. And so I'm sure you can appreciate. But we have to. Indeed, it has been mentioned on more than one occasion in the papers, even. Is that so? It's been mentioned to me, too, very recently. The incident involving the gas stove going out in its foot. Almost leading to someone's death. Mr. Naruhoto, I think perhaps. Yes, it's finally starting to fall into place. The secret link that joins all these strange occurrences. But I can't present right now, right? I've been tried a few times now. This is most troubling indeed. There's always days like this one when I don't get any wages. I can't eat at tea time, see? Now see her doing it, my wife. She gets a devil's look on her face and she slips some white powder into my cup. And you drink it anyway? I was brought up proper, I was. Someone gives you a cup while you drink it. What happened to you? What did it taste like? It was god awful, boy. <laughs> Salty as hell. So she's adding, so she's putting salt in your tea. Right, if it's the audio burst. <laughs> I think perhaps what your wife put in your tea was salt. No! So, she doesn't even care enough to boil me properly, eh? Unbelievable. Let's move on, please. Hold it! Does that mean that the victim could be shown to have ingested something else to change your leaning? I'm sorry, what's that now? Oh, um, I was just saying if the victim did actually eat or drink something else on the night. What's the matter with you? Sorry, sorry? I said if nothing else passed the victim's lips that night, and there's no other explanation, is there? Don't you even listen to me at all? You know there's an English expression about a pot and a kettle that's appropriate here? Compared to the... The other jurors who don't appear to have anything to say about the case at all. It would seem that this elderly gentleman has been listening to the whole proceedings far more intently. I suppose. The trouble is... He has selective hearing? Exactly. But still... I'm sure it may well be the key to the breakthrough break we so desperately need. Ugh, this is hopeless. There's no way for me to appeal to these people. I do think the only way we shall overcome this difficult situation is that supposing the way in which Mr. Shakespeare is really poisoned. We have to prove that it happened some other way and will not be a Mr. McMatsumi's tea. Yeah, I know. Trouble is, I have absolutely no idea how it happened. Mr. Nomahoto, I wonder if this perhaps there's something he might have forgotten. Oh, well, like what? It's important to watch everyone involved and pursue people when, if they react to something someone else says. If you like to remind me exactly what I mean, I'd be more than happy to, of course. Once again, Soseki-san's fate is entirely in my hands here. Probably with my client here, any advice my assistant may be able to offer, so press on what's his other phone remind me. Then again, I'm in... I gotta say no. Uh, why not? We'll see. We'll, we'll refresh the memory. The particular juror is talking, the other jurors will be listening, naturally. 
most of the time when people are speaking themselves, they're more careful. They're careful not to give away more than they want to. But when they listen to others speak, they tend to be less guarded. Yes, that's very true. So if you see people reacting strangely in an unguarded moment, you must pursue them to find out why. Here, take a look at this, Mr. Naruto. When you press the jurors about their assertions, a marker appears in the center of the screen. By using A and D, you can move the marker and see how the other jurors are reacting to what's being said. There's also just a big exclamation point. If you find a particular juror seems to be reacting oddly, you can pursue him or her about it. By catching people off guard, you might be able to glean new and potentially useful information. Yes, alright, I've got it. Press and then if something seems odd, slide the marker with A and D and see if one of the other jurors is having an unusual reaction. So pursue that juror. Well, if you weren't in a gas pipe, it assumes everything in the house is going to be really strong. Uh, I'm gonna save. I'm gonna try pinning you. Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Good gracious. To whose statements do you refer, counsel? Juror number six. Do you hear what juror number three just said? Eh, what? Yes, of course. I heard a mumbling about something or other. There is another explanation here, I believe. Something besides what Mr. Smith and T did, in a manner of speaking, passed the victim's lips on the night in question. What? What explanation? I wonder, did the police check the mouth of the gas pipe feeding the wall light at the scene? To see if there are any traces of poison there. I was curious to see what your floundering would result in this time. But the mouth of a gas pipe? Scotland Yard had enough to do without its its irrelevance. What a piece of work is a man! What are you trying to say, Mr. Shanspear? What speaks thou, prithee? Is it not strange and strange? That is what I say to thee, sir. I was gonna say, do you have evidence that I inhaled gas? I thought it was, I might have been quite clear, but let me put it in another way. Stretch 9 could have been uh, on the mouth of the gas pipe that feeds the wall lamp in your room. And that is how the poison came to enter your body. Good, good lord! Or he just passed out from huffing gas. <laughs> Are they tastier than gas pipes? Is that what he's saying? Or was the gentleman suggesting that the poor man was so desperately hungry he tried to fill his belly with gas? Perhaps no actress will be before the kiss with him. For seeing, madam, speaking by fancy. I assure you, I am not such a buffoon that I have to kiss pipes. Objection! This is no summation examination. This is a farce. The prosecution will not stand for any more of my learned Japanese friends' conjecture. Begin with the lamp in the victim's room is high on the wall. In order to place his lips on the pipe that beats it, he would have to be a contortionist. These are empty assertions. There is no possible proof the man did as you said. It's true. I have no proof that Mr. Shanspear put his lips to the pipe. However, I can say with some certainty that on multiple occasions, Mr. Shanspear has been doing something in front of that lamp on his wall. And I have evidence to prove it. <gasps> Alright, you've got our attention, lad. I'd like to see you know you can be so sure of yourself. 
So would I. Let's see this evidence then. Now that I've got the jury's ear, I need to make this opportunity count. This is the proof that time and time again Mr. Chancellor has stood in front of his gas lamp, doing something weird. Take that! What the? The prints are... Wait, what are they called? Yes, skin prints. That's what the... Uh, they, that were found at the scene. Skin prints, Council? I've never heard of such things. The Justice Ministry is currently assessing whether or not to permit fingerprints. <laughs> fingerprints is evidence in court, however. My lord, this is an exciting forensic developed by the great detective, Mr. Herlock Scholz. It reveals all the places that Mr. Shamsphere touched in his room. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, that's black magic, isn't it? Hmm, well, if anyone could invent something like this, it's that great Shelves fellow, that's for sure. I agree. This month's edition of Engineering Thumbs was quite fascinating. We found skin prints in many places that we would expect on the table and costumes. However, Mr. Shanster also appears to have been touching some very unexpected places in his room. For example, here. Around the hanging picture there, indeed multiple handprints appear to be visible. Well, I wonder, could he have been appreciating the artwork, perhaps? At Earth, my colleagues and I thought the same thing. However, imagine standing with your hands where those prints are, and you'd find yourself directly in front of... In front of... Ah! I don't believe it! The gas lamp! Though the reason why isn't immediately obvious, it's clear that Mr. Shamsphere has been regularly standing with his hands to the wall in front of that lamp. Right, so what have you been up what have you been up to, you nut? I'd asked the court to recall juror number four's earlier statement. Me? What did I say? He said that blowing into a gas pipe would make the lights in the entire building flicker. And now if you will recall juror number three's statement. What, me now? When the gas worker who visited his home blew with too much force into the pipe, he caused all the lights and the gas uh, stove to go out, and gas started to leak in, leaking into the rooms. Obviously, that incident was an accident. However, the simple fact is... If Mr. Chancellor were to have blown hard into the gas pipe here in his room, he could have extinguished every other light and gas stove in the building at will. Crikey! Crikey! Uh, are you suggesting the man purposely caused the gas? Objection! Whilst I acknowledge that the prosecution is required to remain silent during a summation examination, I must toast my learned friend's utter disregard for the letter of the law. This Lord Van Seeks. We have presented ev we presented new evidence to the court, right? And during the summation examination, we're not allowed to do that, right? This curious photograph or whatever it is presented by the defense, the so-called skin prints. And they're also not valid forensics. Clearly that could not be accepted as any form of usable evidence in this case. But but it's an exciting new forensic technique developed by the great a great detective. It's nothing. A mere toy developed by an amateur sleuth with too much time on his hands. Ugh. Hmm. Certainly even research of this nature by the esteemed Mr. Schultz cannot be recognized by the court as formal evidence. Hold but... It. Please, my lord, if I may. Mrs. Otto, it was not the defense's intention to submit the skin prints as formal evidence. We merely wish to present the results of... Really great detective's investigation of the scene as a tool by which to explain the possibility to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. <laughs> and if the trial were to come to an end now, we should never, 
we have known the truth behind these mysterious handprints that everyone has now seen. I don't believe we can allow that to happen, and I'm sure the jurors would agree. <laughs> You're right! Whether those strange handprints are significant or not, it's down to us to decide. Juror number three. Oh yes, I do declare the great detective's investigation results sound absolutely fascinating. I want to hear what that shady actor fellow has to say about those shady handprints. All right, we changed to. What's the matter? Not all what you do. That was foolhardy. Well, I did say it, didn't I? And I don't like to break a promise. No, wait! You heard us, Walter. It's not fair to come evidence. Three to three. Oh, well done, Mr. Donald. Hold on. Just one more juror changes his or her mind. Mr. Natsuma's trial will have to continue. Thank you, Mr. Zato. I couldn't have done it without you. Oh no, it was you who identified the clue after all. This is very much your success. Why, Mr. Shanspear? Why, Mr. Shanspear? You seem to be losing your composure. Just one more juror, Mr. Naruhoto. You can do it. Very well. Continue, counsel. I hope I didn't... I hope I didn't screw up by switching three people. And it was supposed to be like, oh, you had to switch two and two. Um... Hold it! All the evidence you... All the evidence you say? That's right, there's no room for doubt. That's all part of that Japanese man with the big mustache. But the defense just demonstrated another possible explanation for the events on the night in question. What do you make of that? What? Your so called skin prints? It's inciting a forensic investigation technique developed by the great detective himself. The numerous handprints on the wall are clearly out of the ordinary. Mr. Shinsuke had indeed put his mouth to the gas pipe on the night in question. It can't be denied that there's a possibility that that's where the poison was. Well, yes, I won't deny that it's playing on my mind. But as the prosecution rightly says, we should pay no heed to unacceptable forms of evidence. dozens of times before, it doesn't mean he got up to the same shenanigans on the night in question, does it? Oh. If you can't make your case better than that, I'm afraid I can't change my stance. Hmm, you do make a very valid point, sir. What? Hmm, that's true. Perhaps I was a little hasty. No, 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 wait. Look, you've got your chance here, haven't you? So it's time to prove your theory. If you're your Japanese cohorts can, that is. Our nationality out of this, please. Mr. Naruhoto, if we can't substantiate our position, I've heard the jurors that changed their minds before may very well change them back. I do. Is there any more proof I can give here? Can I show that Mr. Jamster really did blow down the gas pipe on the night in question? Do we have some... Oh jeez, I don't I don't think we have supporting testimony. We can't go back and Wait, this guy watched all night, right?
We have supporting testimony. No, in truth, I don't have evidence to support my theory. However, there is a wit witness testimony that substantiates it. What's that? Testimony? This is incredible! Whose testimony? Yes, it's all connected. Everything is linked. The person whose testimony revealed details about the gas and the Garadem residence that night, namely. The Garadem himself, right? Take that! Oh, well, Mr. Foreman, does that convince you? No. <laughs> I don't think he was listening. Mr. Shore Council, I shan't let, let okay. Well we're gonna re we're gonna reload then because <laughs> We're gonna re we're gonna reload because Garadeb did very much say tell well, he very much did tell us about the lights flickering. What's that testimony? What's that testimony? Whose testimony? It's all connected to Namely... Um... Man? Take that! <laughs> that was in the wrong. Okay, it wasn't Meter Man. This is very much a. Hey, do you remember which one of these like seventeen people? Yeah, it was. Okay. Obviously, I'm talking about the defendant. Mr. Sasaki Natsume himself. The defendant? At the very beginning of the proceedings here in court yesterday, Mr. Natsume said the following. My lodgings! There's been a whole series of strange happenings in my lodgings! Even on that fateful night, it happened. When I returned from Mr. Shamsmere's room, I let my gas stove and climbed into bed, but before long, the stove went out. And somebody tried to kill me! On the night in question, the gas in the defendant's room went out. So I asked the court, was that a mere coincidence or not? Good golly! So that Shanspear fellow blew air into the gas pipe to make the man's stove go out on purpose? Now hold your horses there, what would you do that for? Mr. Ford. What the? What is it, man? What the? What is it, man? We cannot allow judgment to be passed whilst this doubt remains. It's true, I don't have conclusive evidence yet, however. I must surely agree that there's more to this case than meets the eye. Arg. Fair enough. Like I said at the outset, I'm a man of logic, first and foremost. Four jurors lean towards not guilty, my lord. We've overturned the decision. <laughs> it took a few attempts, but... Therefore, the defense calls for the trial to continue. As the defense has rightfully indicated, the summation examination has concluded with a majority of jurors altering their decisions. Two jury members now call guilty, four call not guilty. Therefore, the jury's opinion is now conf is conflicted and in accordance with the laws of all of this land, I hereby order the continuation of this trial. Mr. William Shamspear. My lord, how can my humble Shamspear so uh, the... We'll see you in response to the various revelations made during the summation examination. So God mend me, I do solemnly swear. I recall aught of either the lamp or the pipe. I heard words of men inside a mess all over the wall there. 
How'd you explain that, eh? Shouldn't you be leaning towards not guilty if you're on my side? I am done with this. The dignity of this great courtroom has been sullied enough already. Juror number five. Oh, me? As I went to some pains to point out already, a friend from other self-professed great detective's toy has no place in is in a British court of law. Arg! As such, whether or not this man did indeed stand before the gas and I put his hands against the wall remains at this time an established conjecture. You would do all do well to remember that. Ah! Objection! But the prosecution must concede that it would be extremely simple to verify. Just sort of the mouth of the gas pipe feeding that lamp in Mr. Shansphere's room to be examined. If there are traces of poison Objection! What appears to be an extremely simple all is my Nipponese friend's mind. You will recall that in order to check the presence of poison in tea, the tea, some remnants of tea were required. Yes? Therefore, it shouldn't be beyond your wit to imagine that even if poison were to have been spread on the pipe, it would have been completely evaporated by now, making an analysis, any analysis impossible. Ugh, I didn't think of that. In any case, Counsel, I fail to see what could possibly have motivated the, the man to do as you describe. Why on earth would this fellow have wanted to burn air in, into the to blow air into the gas pipe work, pipe work where he lived? There's only one possibility I can think of. And that is... He wanted... He wanted Soseki to die via gas poisoning. To use the leaking gas to commit murder. Ordar! Ordar! Council! Precisely whose life do you propose this man was plotting to end? The answer couldn't be simpler. That well, we've unraveled the mystery this far. Mr. Chancellor wanted to end the life of Soseki Natsume. Take that! If a gas lamp were to go out, it would be noticed immediately, of course. But a gas stove, on the other hand, could be silently extinguished with it by the killer without anyone noticing. I'll live around these parts myself, so I know what it's like. I can tell you, but trying to sleep without the stove lid is pretty much suicide. You'd freeze to death in no time. Mr. Garadet, the landlord, has a large fireplace in his part of the residence on the top floor. In other words, it wasn't the landlord, but a fellow lodger whose life Mr. Shamsphere was trying to end. Outrageous! I'm talking, of course, about the defendant. Mr. Atsume isn't the villain in this case. <laughs> He's the victim this man was trying to murder. Good gracious! Objection! The accused is actually the aggrieved. Interesting. However, the fundamental facts of the case remain unchanged. Namely, that the accused is the aggressor here. What? How can you still claim that? Let us indulge our fancies for a moment and assume there was indeed poison on the mouth of the gas pipe. The question ar then arises, that then arises is, who put it there? <gasps> who did put it there? The only logical conclusion is that the person responsible was aware of this man's trickery with the gas supply and his intent to kill. Yes, that would indeed seem logical. If the assailant were unaware, how would he or she have known to lace the end of the gas pipe with poison? So now we must ask, how could anyone have known of Mr. Shamsphere's murderous designs? Ah, you mean to suggest... Naturally. 
and the sole possible answer to that question couldn't be more obvious. Um, the um, only the man who ciphers me and Titan took it possibly know. What? In other words, the person who put the poison on the gas pipe in what was clearly an retaliatory attack. Can only have been the accused, Mr. Saseki. to avert suspicion from the accused. Far from it. In fact, now that a clear motive for the poison has been still successfully established, that suspicion is greater than ever. Would you like to agree, my Nipponese friend? Uh. Ah! Turn that around on me so rapidly. Mr. Naruto, you must respond. Otherwise, the members of the jury may very well change their leanings again against us again. Hey, uh, Adrian, sorry, buddy. And this may be our last chance to gain an advantage. Well, it would seem that someone put poison on the gas pipe in Mr. Shakespeare's room. So we must name that person now and insult Mr. Natsume of guilt. I mean, name the true culprit? I know it might sound impossible, but if we fail to do that, I have no doubt Mr. Natsume's fate will be sealed once and for all. One possible culprit does come to mind. The evidence, the poison. It's all pointing to a particular person now. Surely they're not trying to say Olive did it. Olive was... Not Olive was in the hospital, right? The prosecution calls for the jury to consider their leanings again. I trust you'll make the correct choice this time, Mr. Foreman. Huh? What? Oh, don't you, you want to know exactly what? There is one other person who I believe could have been involved in all of this. The true culprit of this crime. The, the true culprit? A term found only in second rate novels featuring third rate great detectives, my Nipponese friend. But why not? This farce has gone on for so long already, I see no reason to cut it short before its disappointing climax. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us, my learned friend, Nipponese friend, what is your latest theory? Who is the so-called true culprit of this crime? I mean, 
I can just save right here, actually. <laughs> I'm gonna assume it's... Um... Because she had the ladder. So I'm assuming it's Adrian B. Meterman. Take that! You claim this person is the true culprit? Apparently that was wrong. I was suspicious, I would say, yes. Friend, you should turn those white eyes of suspicion on yourself. Alright, well, we will reload them. saying it's Alt, it's Quinby, right? Duncan Ross is dead. It can't have been Alo, because she was in a coma at the hospital. Mm, let's try all of it, I guess. Take that! Yeah, that was wrong. The name of the person responsible for the poison that affected Mr. Tim's room is a bleed. Miss Olive Green. Miss Olive Green? Miss Olive Green? Wait. We were right? I do feel as though I've heard that name in re the recent past console, but I don't recall where. Miss Olive Green? The woman from six days ago. The victim of the recent case of the stabbing on Briar Road. An incident from which Mr. Matsumi was arrested, I hasten to add. Oh, of course, yes, Miss Green. She was left comatose for some three days ago, but I hear she regained consciousness two days ago. And I hardly need to remind the court that Mr. Shan Spear took the poison. was poisoning took place three days ago. Given the woman's I'm comatose in the hospital at the time, she appears to have a rather fine alibi. True. On the night that the incident occurred, Miss Green was in hospital, unconscious. So on the face of it, it would seem she couldn't possibly be responsible, but still. My colleagues and I visited Miss Green in hospital yesterday. We found her to be in possession of a bottle of poison. Good gracious, she had poison? And there's another fact that links Miss Green to this case as well. The defense requests that she be brought to the witness stand in order to explain the details to the court. Hmm. Tell me, Mr. Shadowspear. My lord, pray, what be thy bidding? Are you acquainted with Miss Green? Eh? N no, never heard of her. Touching by the look on Mr. Shamster's face, I think perhaps he genuinely doesn't know her. At least, not by me. As the voice of Her Majesty's prosecution here, I adhere to my word. We will see my letter in Yukonese for us through to its conclusion. I, I appreciate that. The prosecution requests a short recess, my lord, in order to subpoena the witness and bring her here. Yes, Miss Olive Green. Indeed, my lord. One hour should be sufficient. Very well, I grant the request. Excellent, I hope. The defense has made a most extraordinary accusation, I must say. But at the present time, I feel the prosecution's argument remains largely uncontested. Accordingly, I'm afraid the defendant and his culpability remain the sole subject of this court's attention. Thank you, counsel. We reconvene in one hour. Court is adjourned. And to be continued. I guess we're not going to episode three tonight. Because <laughs> it's midnight. Uh, that's the end of the YouTube video. So, later YouTube.